everybody, Fintan here from Dams and Cloud, and this week I wanted to talk about a feature called appointment scheduling. It's not a new feature, but another one of a similar name, appointment slots, is getting deprecated. And as a result, appointment schedules are getting a couple of extra features. Now, we covered appointment schedules a good few years ago when it launched as a, as a Calendly killer. I don't think it's quite killed Calendly, but it's certainly a great replacement for anyone or alternative for anyone who's already using Google Workspace and doesn't want to pay for a solution like Calendly. I personally use it as my primary way of booking appointments with customers, um, and so does the rest of our team. So I'm just going to quickly go through uh, the updates, and then I'm going to do a quick demonstration, actually, of pretty much all of the features within the appointment scheduling. So you can see here the blog post from Google is called Enhancing Google Calendar Appointment Scheduling Experience. It mentions the deprecation of the appointment slots feature, which is happening, as I said, in July 2024. And it goes through a couple of the new features. Now, there's about three new features. Um, for me, there's definitely one major one. Uh, the first one is the ability to repeat your schedule. So before, you could only repeat it on a weekly basis. But for some customers, they need the ability to have them repeat every two weeks or four weeks or you know, that sort of customized repeat schedule. And so that's what um, Google has added is that customized repeat schedule. The second one is the ability to allow guests to invite other people. And this for me is probably the key addition here because before um, people would book in the appointment and they would have to like just type in the person's name and then you as the, the manager of the appointment would then have to take those and manually add them to the calendar uh, invite, which is just a, a, an admin overhead. Now others are going to be able to add in people's email addresses and they'll be automatically invited to the calendar appointment. So that's fantastic. And as I said, probably my favorite one. And then the last one is the ability to add uh, co-hosts, which you could do, um, but now you can add co-hosts uh, via a group. So um, you can just put in a group like sales ad or info ad, and anyone who's in that group will automatically get added. So let's jump into it. Um, I have my little appointment uh, uh, schedule here. I'm going to edit it. So in my one here, I've got my uh, name at the top, my duration. So you can decide on the duration. I've decided on one hour. And I've put in Monday to Friday, and I've put in my times. You'll note here on Friday, I only do one till five because of availability. So, you know, you can be quite customized, as I said, with that. We see the repeat one here. It's set to repeat weekly, which is fine for me, but I could do custom, and I could decide on every second week or every third or fourth week, every seventh week <laughs> if I wanted, and I could have an end date as well. I'm going to leave that alone. In terms of your scheduling window, you can also uh, decide this. So you can limit the time um, during which your, your appointments can be booked uh, and the maximum time in advance. So 60 days, 90 days, etc. cetera. Um, again, for some organizations, depending on how you're using this, uh, that can be important. You can also have some appointment settings. So things like buffer time, maximum bookings per day, that new setting we were talking about where we can allow guests to invite other people. I can avoid conflicts with other people. I can actually have a check other people's availability. That's very useful if you want other people on the call, like you're a salesperson and a, you have a sales engineer and you need to combine those uh, two calendars. So I can do that there. And then I can add my co-hosts. I think one thing to note here is that if I add a co-host, like I add Ruben, that doesn't mean that it's going to check his schedule. It's just going to add him as a co-host. Up here, I would need to actually go to his calendar and make sure that his calendar is selected um, so that it would check the, the clashing or the availability. Okay, so that's just kind of an important one. Uh, and if I want, I could add an entire group. So I could add the sales at, and that would add the uh, eight people in the sales team. So, um, and actually two for marketing as well. Um, so that, that's the idea of the groups that you could add multiple people. I don't have a use case for that, but some, some other people might. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to jump to my uh, sort of sales page. This is what the other person sees on the other end. So they can select an appointment time. Uh, and obviously, it's automatically put in my details here. Um, but I'm going to put in Bob Smith, um, Bob at DamsonCloud.com. I can now pick a, a topic for the agenda. And I can also now put in who's attending because my, my guests have been allowed to do that. So if I put in other people in here, they will automatically be added 
um, to that appointment. So I could put in um, lots of different people here and they'd be automatically added in to the um, appointment if I wanted. Okay, so I could do Bob here, book that in and it would um, add the appointment to, to my calendar and also to all of those um, people as well. Okay, so that's the appointment scheduling feature. As I said, if you are using um, the appointment slots, do make sure that you take a look at that before the end of July as that feature will be deprecated. I hope you guys found this uh, video interesting. If you are interested in keeping uh, up to date on Google Workspace and all things remote working, please do follow and subscribe to Dancing Cloud and I will see you guys in the next one.